your vessel be empty, he will supply, for his yoke is easy, he will supply, he will supply, he will supply, for Jesus said that he will supply. Your dreams feel like memories. He will supply. Some relationships are now empty. He will supply. He will supply. He will supply. Oh, Jesus said that. My friend, don't you worry, he will supply, this is just temporary, he will supply, he will supply, he will supply, oh Jesus Jesus, my Jesus, sweet Jesus, yes, Jesus, oh, Jesus said that he will supply. Love.
today because he supplies grace to keep salvation for eternity he supplies my daily bread he supplies morning by morning new mercy he supplies hallelujah well, welcome to Dove Church, first Sunday in December. We thank the Lord and we're rejoicing in this house today, thanking God for his goodness to us and his mercy. We welcome you into our sanctuary today. Thank God for you being here. We're praying for you. You keep praying for us and believing with us. We thank you for your generosity and your love and your comments and just keep believing God because the word is good for you too that God will supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. By Christ Jesus our Lord. He's a supplier. Amen. You ready for the word? Amen. Everybody with your Bibles. Repeating after me, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, as I gladly receive the Word today. I believe, I believe that faith comes, that faith comes by, hearing, by hearing and hearing by, hearing by the Word of God. Word of God. Amen. Amen. Now, let me caution you. If you're using your phone, you should be looking up Scripture. Amen? Amen. So if I don't see your eyes, I know you're looking at something else. Amen. 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 And that's, that's why we're here for this period of edification. Not only does it come through the worship, but it comes through the word. Amen. And so, so we require that you operate in that way. Amen. All right. All right. The series title is Faith Triumphs in Trouble. Faith Triumphs in Trouble. Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Faith triumphs in trouble, lesson two. The title to lesson two is Tribulation and Trouble. Tribulation and trouble. Tribulation 
and trouble. When I sat down to write this message, after reading the scripture that I'm going to give you a little later, I said, who wants to hear a sermon about tribulation and trouble at Christmas time? You, want to, you don't want to hear about what you may be going through. But in spite of the fact of what we, we, we go through, we make songs about it and sing about trouble. Here's a few titles you may recognize. Bridge Over Trouble Waters. Nobody Knows the Trouble I've Seen. As the Negro Spiritual and sung by Sam Cooke years ago. I'm getting feedback. And then Luther Barnes sung in the 70s, Trouble in My Way. And then the runaway hit, I'm climbing up the rough side of the mountain. You sing about troubles. You sing about tribulation. And then another big hit. The title fools you a little bit because it says, You Raise Me Up by Josh Groban. But when I looked into the lyrics, this was it. The first stanza. When I am down and owe my soul too weary. When trouble comes and my heart burden be. Then I am still and wait here in silence. Until you come and sit a while with me. And then one song, it doesn't have a whole lot of words. It just says, trouble, trouble, trouble. So we talk about trouble. We sing about trouble. We testify of trouble. So I'm going to preach about trouble today. (laughs) But this lesson will... Discuss how tribulation and trouble have a purpose for our lives. Tribulation and trouble have a purpose. Being a Christian does not entitle you to become an escape artist. From all the issues of life. And that's not a reason to become a Christian. So I won't get into trouble. Go and get saved because it happens on both sides of the fence. Trouble. But I want you to know this today. God has a plan for your tribulation and trouble. Trouble may be one incident where something troubling happened. But tribulation may be an expanded, extended period of many troubles together. But before you turn off this message, Paul says something completely life-changing about tribulation in Romans, the fifth chapter. Verses three and four. Romans five, verse three and four. If you need a Bible, raise your hand. An usher will bring you a Bible. Romans 5, verse 3 and 4. Everybody got it? Wait for me to get there. Picking up from where we left off in the first lesson, and it says there, and not only that, but we also glory, everybody say glory, glory. in tribulation. 
That's rough right there. Glory and tribulation. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. That's a good verse. Let's, 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 let's deconstruct it. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Another word for tribulation is stress. <laughs> you all know what stress is. Stress. Some of the ailments in our body are because of stress. <laughs> Some of you sitting there like you don't know what I'm talking about. You will in a minute. <laughs> stress is a force or strain. Stress is a stretching. It's a tug. It's a pull. It pulls you beyond what you think you can stand. Stress. While you're finishing a death load of assignments, your supervisor comes along with 25 more. That's stress. And if you're a computer person, an IT person, you're working on tickets and closing tickets. Anybody know what I'm talking about there? And then you get a whole slew of new tickets. That if they just had paid attention to what they were doing, you wouldn't have had it on your desk. <laughs> or you worked the afternoon shift and the day shift left you a gift. <laughs> Extra work. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Stress. Stress is a force or strength. It means to stretch to the limit. One of our, our most used terms, at least in my environment, and at least in my world, is don't stress me out. At some point, you all say that to somebody. Don't stress me out. It, it really is not a cry for help. It's a threat. Because you don't want to know what's on the other side of this stress. Stress me out. Keep doing it. I'm going to jack you up. I shouldn't say jack you up. I, that's not a godly word. I'm going to get with you. <laughs> I'm not going to how many kids has an adult told you don't stress me out I don't want y'all to be confused it's a threat it's a threat that may involve pain or discomfort because stress carries you to places you don't think you would get to <laughs> it brings a different language out of you Colorful, sharp, pungent, direct, hurtful. <laughs> None of you use that. But you have the propensity to use it. That's why don't stress me out is a threat. Because you may click me over into that other place. In other words, when you say don't stress me out, it also means do not put a painful stretch on me. Don't stretch me. 
Don't stress me is to not stretch me. Don't stretch me. Amen. I had an analogy while I was sitting and writing this, and the Lord brought it back to me, and it was something I remember from, from I, I had got some information probably in the days when I used to go to the gym. And it was about weightlifting. Weightlifting is both painful and stressful. Well, you don't know that unless you've ever done it. <laughs> I didn't get, even get many amens. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> you, 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 if you've done this, you know it. To become good at weightlifting, one must keep lifting. That's why most gyms make a lot of money with new memberships. Because after that first go round, you may try it a few more times and then you say, I'm going home. And you stop and buy some fast food on the way home. Because immediately the gym stressed you out. And this usually follows your New Year's resolution. I'm going to do better. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to get in shape. But getting into shape is both painful and stressful. <laughs> Y'all out there? How many know I'm telling you the truth? Well, getting back to this weightlifting analogy, the more you are able to lift indicates that you have pushed past the pain and stress. But what you really have done is stretched your muscles out through exercise. You stretched them out. First, you shocked them. What? And then you stress them out. Because stress involves a stretch. That's why it's painful. And that's why after you get through doing it the first couple of times, you feel pain in places you didn't know existed. Oh, I didn't know. What is that that's hurting there? Come on, come on, stay with me. You did it through exercise. Here is the process. Here is the process. Each time you lift weights, you make micro tears in the muscle fiber. Individual little tears. So to be a weightlifter and to exercise good, you got to tear something up. That's why it hurts. Uh, I tore something. <laughs> oh, I, that, I, oh, ow, I tore something. And I don't mean something gravely like you trying to go in, you've never lifted before, and you go grab a, a, a 60 pound weight and, and, and throw it up. You might give it up, but after that, your shoulder won't let you lift up a bag of popcorn after that. Because you got a little adventurous and you thought you were, you were better than you were. Anybody ever done that? You strained something trying to be super. Oh, I don't have to go through 10 pounds first. I can go to some higher. <laughs> I can do better than that. And your body tells you, go on back. Go on back down there. Get that five pound weight. Get used to holding something heavy. <laughs> you make micro tears in the muscle. When you rest from the exercise routine known as reps, short for repetitions, the micro tears begin to heal. And where they heal at that point in the muscle tissue, once healed, it's stronger than it was before. And as you get stronger, if you keep doing it, you get bigger. 
You know, you think them guys just got that way because they just didn't do anything. They progressively kept tearing and they got bigger. Everybody wake up. They got bigger. How many weightlifters and people that did that know what I'm talking about? You got big. You start seeing some definition. That's why in most gym, there's, there, there's mirrors there. So you can like, not like what you see when you first walk in there. Oh, boy. Because in the mirror, you see Brother uh, Mr. America. What you see in yourself, what you see in his reflection. And so you keep working until you can see a little bend in your arm. <laughs> until your stomach starts moving in. Without you holding it in. <gasps> ooh, ooh. This is good to me. So, as you do this again and again, the muscles get larger and larger. Maybe your trouble and tribulation is making small tears in your spirit. And you're becoming stronger than before. So, because you get stronger, you can handle much more later on. Strength in trials and tribulation. The devil don't intend to make you strong in tribulation, but God does. He said, when they get through with this tear, they're going to be better than they were before. <laughs> so don't get upset. Don't quit. Don't walk out. Stay with your membership. Because after a while, you're going to see some definition. In your arm and in your leg. I can handle this. Yeah, I've been to that place before. Anybody ever been to some place and you recognize it when you get there and you say, I can handle this. I can go through this. I can deal with this. It didn't kill me. I'm all right. Woo. Then the scripture tells us something else that sounds Almost crazy. But the person that's talking about it is the Apostle Paul who went through everything. So he said, glory in tribulation. Yeah. What? So I, you know what? I can't play with the scripture. I have to understand exactly what they mean. Every time I say, well, when I saw tribulation, I had to look it up. I don't want to assume. So when I saw glory there, I know when we see glory, we think of shining things, the brightness of his glory, the whatever. That's not what this glory means. Glory here means to boast in, to be proud of. What? Tribulation. So because something happened to you, it shouldn't change your virtue. Shouldn't change your character. You kick the cat and throw the dog out. You mad at everything. You grumpy because it happened. Whew. But glory and tribulation, that, 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 it came to tear you up, but God's going to build you up in it. Glory in it. Because you need the production of glory in tribulation. What is that? It's called perseverance. See, when you get stronger, you're able to go longer, and that's what's perseverance looked up is endurance. That's why when, 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 when Lucille was running his marathon, he just didn't decide the morning of the marathon, I'm going to run a marathon. 
or, or, or his dad would have gotten a call. It might have been Lou if he was able to talk. Come pick me up. Where are you? I'm laying on the curb. How'd you get there? I was running a marathon. Did you run? No. What happened? I passed out. Because you don't start running the marathon the day of the marathon. It's a series of tears as you get prepared to endure and persevere over the long haul. So boast in the fact that you're getting torn. Oh, you don't like this. Merry Christmas, babe. I know that's what you want to hear today, you know. Hark the herald angels sing. Joy to the world. We'll get there. But just for the day, you're getting towed up. <laughs> and it's in this word because we need to understand the process. Boast in the process. Because it's producing something. My God. See, the process makes it, makes it possible for you to endure because as you heal, you can handle the long haul. Something you're able to go through because you heal from something previously and God says, you can go a little further now. It doesn't stop you. It messed with you then, but you got past it. Turn to somebody and tell them you got past it. You can go a little further. Anybody in this room got past some stuff? Oh my God. No, 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 no I'm not playing. The Lord brought you through some stuff. And you know what? It, 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 what? it was not a choke. You cried sometime. You laid up and you looked at the top of the ceiling in your bedroom and you wondered, Lord, what's going on? And, 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 and then you, you, you asked like the people uh, in, 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 the, in the movie, the Ten Commandments, when, when the death angel was coming in, somebody asked Moses, will it pass? Will it pass? Yeah, it'll pass. Will it pass? <laughs> Yeah, you're sitting here because your testament that you got torn, but you made it through. And so you're sitting upright because God kept you. So I'm telling you today, boast and brag in your tribulation and your trouble. Because so far, you're winning. <laughs> Did you hear me? You are winning, and you're going to win it finally. Don't get crazy. Don't act like this is it. You've been here before, but you're fitted for the next. Because God is going to bring something out of your tribulation and your trouble that's going to be to his glory. It's the fact that, thank you, God, that you survived. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I did it to his glory. Yeah. Wasn't by power and it wasn't by might. Oh, you better get happy now. <laughs> but it was by your spirit. Somebody else got crazy and said, for your glory I've been raised. <laughs> you wouldn't be the God of the overcomer if you left me down there. You raised me up. 
for your glory. <laughs> Give him a praise right there. Just look at somebody in the room, point to him, say, you're a winner. Tell him you've been through it, but you're a winner. Come on, give God a praise. Second Timothy 2 and 3. When young Timothy got upset, Paul said, let me jack him up. He said, you there, that's what thou therefore means. You therefore must endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure hardness as a good soldier. Is that in your Bible? Of Jesus Christ. A runner must be stressed to gain endurance. You've got to be stressed. A sailor must go to sea and be tested by the sea to become seaworthy. And you're not a good sailor if you never get seasick. I'll never forget one of my first cruises. And we left the port and everything was all pretty and the, 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 the boat, which looked like an apartment building floating on the water, that already shocked me and intimidated me. I said, this thing can fall over sideways. And for the first few few hours while I was on the boat, everybody was running to the edge. I was running to the wall. I was standing back. I Because I said, this thing may get to rocking and reeling. And I didn't want to be shark food. So I, um, as we stayed on the boat that, that evening, and the, the next day the water got a little choppy. So the narrative around being on the boat changed. And you know, there's a motion, you rock, and then you bounce back. But one time I rocked so hard, my stomach told me, you're rocking too much. (laughs) (laughs) And I noticed that after a while, we, we kind of figured out that you know, there weren't a whole lot of people on, on deck. They, were, they had all gone into their room to rock steady. <laughs> it's called getting seasick. So you're not a sailor until the sea tests you. Until the sea tests. A soldier must go into battle. That's when you're a soldier. You're not a soldier in boot camp. That's why Paul had to tell Timothy, endure hardness as a good soldier. It's what soldiering is all about. For the Christian, tribulation is part of our Christian lives. We should not desire or hope for tribulation-free Christian living, especially because God uses tribulation wonderfully in our lives. It's the testimony of the overcomer that convinces people that God is able. You look at some people and you say, you've been through something, but look at you. And the beauty is, you don't look like what you've been through. You look better. And people will get mad and say, you never go through anything. You don't know. Woo! 
You've never been broke before. You weren't there when the, when, the, when the utility got turned off. You weren't there when we lost the first house. You weren't there when there was no oil for our oil furnace in the first house. Because God is so good that in the midst of my tribulation, I boasted on his goodness. So I gloried in it. So I don't look like what I went through. Thank you, Lord. And you all look good. You look good. I know some of you have been through something. But you look good. You ought to just pat yourself. You look that good. God's been that good to you. <laughs> you ought to get excited. Hey. I rejoice because you didn't let it walk over me. And leave tracks on me. So it was rough, but I woo, look God. In you, I'm able to live, move, and have my bed. I don't look like what I've been through. <laughs> Joel 23 and 10. Job 23 and 10. When you have it, say amen. All right. Does it start out, but he knows? Yes. That's a good place. Don't those th come on. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, and the King James Version says, tried, I shall come forth. Let's go. The statement is truly stated, but not a statement of truth. Job said it that way, but this is how God acts. God, God does not tempt or test us, but uses the trouble from the enemy for our good. He don't tempt you to make you say that God is good. God strengthens us for the next trouble. So don't be afraid. If you've been through something, you're able to get through the next. And this ought to be your boasting because every time Paul got a prophetic word about this was going to happen to him, he said, not only am I ready to be, be chained, I'm ready to be tied up, I'm ready to go to the next in this thing. Don't, that doesn't scare me. And then he said, okay, I know where you're going. You're scared of dying. He said, absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I'm going to win no matter what. Come on, come on. You can't fool me with death. In the face of it, I'm going to be all right. Come on. See, some of you scared somebody going to talk about you. Paul had to live with the threat of death over him daily. He said, but let me tell you what I have. I have a choice in the matter. I have a choice to stay here and be with you all and keep preaching to you all. Or I can go be with the Lord. But here is my resolve, absent from the body, is to be present with the Lord. In other words, it don't matter. I still win. So I might as well keep preaching until I'm done. 
So y'all give up and you ain't in facing, you ain't facing death. You just got kicked down a little bit. You say, why are you down boasting? God, you see this trouble? <laughs> I'm going through this thing. I feel a little tear. That's when you know him as a healer. You are the God that healeth me. And then he heals the tear and you say, whoo, I can go through the next. But some of you live your life dodging trouble. But trouble is not dodgeball. Because you didn't get hit this time. In gym, I found out there was always that guy that no matter how I dodged and got behind everybody else, he could find me and hit me. I hated dodgeball. <laughs> I hated it. And he would pop me every time. And I couldn't say nothing bad to him because we was in gym class. I didn't want to get sent home to Thelma. Did you hear me? Yes. No one is free of tribulation. Don't even think the people in the world are free of tribulation. You, you better be glad that you're in the Lord because he, he, as you boast in tribulation, he is the one that helps you in your tribulation. You end up in a better place. You have a better outcome. What are virtues? Virtues are those things that are a part of your character, your person, those things that, that help you be good as a believer, virtues. That part of you, that innermost thing inside of you. When the woman touched Jesus' garment, he felt virtue left out. He felt some of his goodness leave out of him. And virtue can be either great or it can be poor. And since this is the Christmas season, I want to talk about, and I'm going to get to that. Whatever virtues tribulation find in us, it develops it more fully, more fully. If anyone is carnal, Moved by the flesh, weak, blind, wicked, haughty, and so forth. Tribulation will make them more carnal, weak, blind, wicked, and irritable. In the movie, A Christmas Carol, is a key character known as Ebenezer Scrooge. He was rich. But that did not make him a nice person. His virtues of being mean, wicked, hateful, haughty, and stingy were magnified by his wealth. Some people think if I got rich, I'd be a nicer person. No, you won't. You'd be stingy, mean, haughty, self-centered. Oh, I didn't get a lot of amens on that. <laughs> oh, if I had Oprah money, I would do such and such. Do it with loose L money now on here. <laughs> Try it. Just, just test it now. Test it under a six-figure salary. Then you'll know what you'll be, what you'll be if you get millions. See, if you're a giver and you only make $100, when you get thousands, it won't be a problem. Woo! Woo! So we keep asking God to give us more, and he's saying, hmm. Oh, that turned nasty, didn't it? I'm going to be so nice to people. No, you're not. On the other hand, if one is spiritual, strong, 
wise, gentle, and humble. He will become more spiritual, powerful, wise, and gentle, and humble in tribulation. So boast in it. Because you are being made better through it. Ooh. What does tribulation work? It works patience. How many of us could be a little more patient? You know, what, 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 what's happening in the world today is people are impatient with each other. If you don't drive fast enough, they blow on you. I get blown on all the time. <laughs> I'm impatient. <laughs> Sometimes they do some funny stuff with their fingers. Because they were impatient. Sometimes I find folk get bold while they're in their car. Something they would do in their car, they would do if they were outside of that car. <laughs> I start to demonstrate some of those hand moves, but I think that would be inappropriate in the pulpit. But I hope you don't use your hands that way. You just say hallelujah. Amen. In the natural, this is not so. For the person operating in the natural and not the spiritual, tribulation worketh patience. Ooh. You can be more patient. Ask anybody who has buried a child, who has lost their money, who has suffered pain in their body, they will tell you that the natural result of affliction is impatience. That being, it produces irritation, impatience. You're irritable all the time. Bad distemper. Scrooge had a bad temper. Bad personality. Growl, grimaced all the time. But what impatience and what not operating in the spiritual realm does, it causes the person that engages in it to rebel against God and question God. When stuff happens, God goes to trial. You kill my child. You took my job. If you were God, you wouldn't have let this disease come on me. Yeah, you question God. He goes on trial. So you stop serving him because you got rebellious. Ooh. But what a wonderful change happens when the Holy Spirit renews us. So as I come to a close, perseverance leads to character. They build one upon another. And character leads to more hope. These qualities come from perseverance which comes through tribulation. We may wish to have better character and more hope without starting with tribulation, but that isn't God's pattern. He does it through trouble. He does his best work for you when you get in trouble. How many know I'm right about that? He shows you how powerful and and strategic he can be when you get in trouble. That's, one, that's why one person said he can make a way. Come on, don't mess with me today. Because he gets strategic when one of his is in trouble. Because he knows the devil is crafty. You knocked them down, but they belong to me. And I got a plan to get them back up. 
Oh, God, oh, God. You ought to thank the Lord for that. I don't care what it's been. He's gotten you out of trouble. It wasn't your Phi Beta Kappa. It wasn't your Cum Laude status. It was because God was God. And he loved you better than you loved your crazy self. Well, you thought you were being so wise and so, so crafty. He said, I'm going to let you get to the end of yourself. Then I'm going to show myself strong for you. When you get through thinking about how wonderful you are, I'll be standing there as the way out of nowhere. With the ability that only I have. Tribulation. Trouble. Thank you God. Blessings to you. (laughs) Come on bless him. Even if you're going through something, I want you to bless him today. I want you to boast in it today and tell God. Thank him for some of the tears. Thank you for the strength that comes out of the tears. Thank you for I'm able to endure in spite of the tears. I'm stronger and I'm wiser. I'm able to last longer. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give him another praise in this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're here today and you, or you're looking at us, make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ today. He loves you. Get on the side that's that's gonna always win. Repeat after me these words. Father, in Jesus' name, I surrender my life to you. Jesus, I repent of sin. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Today, I believe in a miracle. I believe that one day you died on a cross. And on that third day morning, you were raised from the dead to the glory of God. And on that confession, and with that faith, I am saved. Thank you for saving me. Amen. If you made that confession, did they find a good church that teaches the word plainly, that worships God, enters into his presence? We're at 4660 Military on the corner of Horatio in Detroit, Michigan. Come see us. We'd be glad to have you. Thank you for looking in on us. Blessing to you today. Come on, give God another good praise in this room. Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.